Welcome to this session about alternatives to Jamboard. I'm Elizabeth Bennett. Uh, as of this week, I am the full-time digital learning specialist at Literacy Minnesota. Previously, I've taught in K-12 settings and I've taught adult learners um, in pre-GED, GED, and ESL classes in a variety of contexts. Most recently, I've been teaching online and high flex classes, and that's why I thought it was really important to have this session about Jamboard since so many of us, it's become such an essential tool. Um, the objectives for this session are first to clarify your instructional purpose um, or purposes when you're using Jamboard or some other tool. Um, some of us teach computer classes in ABE, but I think most of us don't just teach a technology or computers class, right? We are using technology in the context of other content that we're teaching. And I think also sometimes teachers are told, um, here are some devices, your students should use them, or guess what, you're teaching online, figure it out. And we don't always have the time and space to really think through and be intentional about which tools and routines that um, are going to work best for us and our learners, um, and that are going to support and enhance the other content that we're teaching. So we'll spend some time just thinking about um, our purpose before we try to choose a tool. Um, and then I will take you through a show and tell of uh, Google Apps, FigJam, and Flippity Manipulatives. You'll be able to identify some of their key features and pros and cons. And then the second half of the session is going to be time for you uh, to really kind of dig in and start to explore one of the tools that is new to you. So the agenda will have a warm up activity. We're going to do a kind of an interactive, I hope, show and tell. Uh, I don't think we'll have time to actually try out the tools during um, the first half of this session, um, but you'll have plenty of time during the second half. Please, please, please use the chat. Um, I do want this to be as interactive as possible. We will take a break approximately 2.15 to 2.30. Then the bulk of the second part of the session is going to um, be just time for you to explore and play and mess around. And we'll do um, a little bit of debriefing at the end. Uh, I see Dawn in the chat is asking, yeah, how a beginner um, should, should how you get started with Jamboard. Um, and I would say, frankly, don't bother at this point because it's going away. Um, so don't worry if you don't know how to use Jamboard, um, learn how to use one of these other tools instead. So for our warm up activity, I'm going to put a link in the chat to a Google Doc. Um, and here, I'll show it to you real quick. Um, I'd like you to just put uh, your um, name or your initials in this first column. Um, I find that really helpful when I'm doing something like this where anyone can edit the document. Um, I'll have my learners put their names or I'll put their names if I know who's going to be there. Um, so everybody knows where they're supposed to write and you don't end up with 10 people all trying to write in the same place. Um, and then you're going to just share how have you used Jamboard. Um, just one example is fine. If you want, you can add more. Um, why were you using Jamboard in that context? Um, what made it a good or or maybe maybe you didn't really want to use it, but you were just told you should use you should have used it. Um, and then if you used it, reflect a little bit how well or maybe poorly did Jamboard work for you which features of the tools were most helpful and what, if anything, would you have liked to change about Jamboard? Um, yeah, and I see if you haven't used Jamboard before, don't worry, um, you can write about another tool that you've used in the past um, or you can just read other people's responses. I'll drop these links in the chat there. Go ahead. Um, so 
I, I'm sorry, I misunderstood this session. You're saying that Jamboard is totally going away like non-existent. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. I'm sorry. I missed that totally. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it's very bad news for a lot of ABE teachers, but so that's why we have this. Um, I'll go ahead and drop these links in the chat. I know sometimes I didn't know how many people were coming. Um and sometimes things get slow if too many people are in the same document. So try to um, get in and add to that first document. But if something's not working for you, there is that second copy if you need it. And I'm going to actually um, turn off my microphone and just be quiet for a few minutes so you can think. Um, and then I'll, yeah, I'm probably going to just set a timer for myself because I tend to take too much time on activities sometimes. All right, so um, take just a few more seconds to finish up uh, your sentence. And then why don't you return to your Zoom window so everyone's looking at the same thing. Um, I'll just point out, since Google Apps is one of the tools I'm covering today, 
Uh, I think this is kind of a new feature in Google Docs. When you make a table, you can now um, pin um, a row. So this is really useful. Um, you just kind of hover over to the side and you can click that pin icon. Um, you can also really easily insert new rows um, with that plus sign. Um, and you can even uh, drag and drop the row if I get it right. Um, you can with that the like six little dots and my cursor is not cooperating right now. But um, so that is really nice, especially the pinning, I think, is so useful um, if students are scrolling through a big table. Um, I noticed a lot of people um, have been using Jamboard um, as a presentation tool like I have been. Um, and also uh, the sticky notes seem to be very, very popular. Um, and some people mentioned it was nice. Sometimes students could interact with it and they didn't even have to write anything. They can just move things around and respond in that way. Um, you could also use some color coding, some highlighting. Um, Personally, I loved that laser pointer. That was really nice. Um, so we, yeah, we, we had a lot of good uses for Jamboard and it seems like it really enhanced um, our instruction, whether we really, whether we just wanted to present something and um, have a record of it, or we wanted to give students um, a chance to share their ideas. So I'm going to, give you a few disclaimers um, before I launch into the show and tell part. Um, I was a really busy teacher, just like most of you, I think. So I am not claiming to know everything about all of these tools. Um, I'm just sharing with you um, the three that I'm kind of most familiar with and that seemed to work pretty well for me. I'm gonna be talking about my opinions based on my own experience. You have different experiences, you are free to disagree. And if you are watching the recording, I'm giving this presentation in August, 2024. Um, so if you're watching it a few months from now, it is completely possible that everything could be wildly out of date because tech things change. So I'll drop this link in the chat for you. I just made a big chart. Um, laying out a lot of my thoughts on these various platforms and tools. I'm going to focus on the first page of the chart. So do Google Docs, Slides and Sheets, um, Fig Jam, and Flippity Manipulatives today. Like I said, these are the ones just I have the most experience with them. They worked pretty well. Um, when I was using Google Classroom, which I know um, many of us are using Google Classroom or Google Meet. Um, and very important for ABE, these are all free um, or free for teachers if you have an education account. I've included some other really great tools on the second page. Um, and if we have time, I do want to get into Padlet a little bit today, um, but it's not really free. So I just focused on these three for those reasons. I'm going to share with you one activity that I did in Jamboard. So I'll share what the original Jamboard looked like, and then um, I'll share three other versions and maybe a fourth version if we have time. Um, just for some context, um, I have to say thank you. I think I saw Liddy in this session. Um, a few years ago, Liddy Rich presented on um, all these amazing activities that she does with songs in her ELL classes. Um, and I basically just took all of her great ideas and stole them and have used them a lot. Um, so this is based on one of her activities. I used it in an intermediate ESL class. I was teaching high flex. Um, I made it into um, an assignment in Google Classroom, and students who were online um, at home obviously had to work on it individually. If learners were in the classroom, I usually tried to pair um, two learners on one device so they could get some more support that way. Um, 
and then sequence um, the sentences as they're listening to this song. Okay. Um, I used in Google Classroom the um, feature in assignments where you can make a copy for each student. So every student had their own individual Jamboard that they could edit um, and move things around, as you'll see. All right, so here's what the Jamboard looked like. Yes, and it, it always warns you, Jamboard will be view only starting October 1st, and then eventually I think all the Jamboard files are just going to disappear unless you save them. Um, so uh, good to know. So when students um, got to this Jamboard, um, they had, I just wanted them to practice, right? Because they are going to be moving things around. So I just had them move the words to the circle. Okay, great and then go on to frame two. And I would play the video um, on my computer and they would listen and try to sequence the sentences. Um, this video, particular video had a little speech before she started singing. So I, I had them um, try to listen and sequence the speech. That was the hardest part, um, but I wanted to talk about Juneteenth a little bit. So we that's why that's in there. Um, and then as the song started playing, I can um, just hold up fingers like you should be on frame two now, you should be on frame three, frame four, and frame five. And we would usually listen to the song multiple times, so they would have multiple chances to um, try to get everything in the right place. Um, so if I were going to do this activity in Google Slides, it might look like this. Um, you can, I put everything in text boxes in Google Slides. I realized it might have been easier for learners if I had just taken a screenshot of each line of text, because now you have to be really careful. Are you going to like, if you, if you just click in the box and you're selecting the text, then nothing's going to move. So learners are going to have to know how to get that um, crisscross arrows to move the whole text box, okay? So think about that um, if you were thinking you might wanna use Google Slides for this type of an activity where learners have to move things. Um, the other slides, I mean, everything is, is pretty similar to Jamboard. Um, I just had to retype everything in a separate text box. Um, here's what it looked like when I imported the Jamboard into FigJam. So FigJam, when you create a new file, there is an option to import and it works um, pretty slick with uh, with Jamboard. Um, the only, we'll talk about this, but I didn't like the size because when you click and open the file, this is what the student sees. Um, and so you really have to zoom in to actually see. And Big Jam's big thing is that it is an infinite canvas. So unlike um, slides or Jamboard, there are no like pages or slides or frames to click through. They see everything all at once. Um, so they're gonna have to zoom in but then once you zoom in so you can actually see it, um, it's pretty easy to move the, the text box around. Um, just like in Jamboard, it works pretty similarly. Um, yeah, Susie, that's a great question. Uh, do students have to log in to get to a Fig Jam? No. Um, you So the way I would do this, if I were gonna do this with a real um, class of students, is I have to um, select, so you can do um, where you, in Fig Jam, um, you can select a whole bunch of things and make them into a section. So once they're grouped as a section, you can move all of those things around together. You can copy and paste. So that's what I did to get multiple um, versions of it in the same file. Um, I think I probably would not use this with my learners for this particular activity because you can imagine, um, you know, if you have a big class, 25 
learners, you're going to have to duplicate and get 25 sections. Um, it might be very confusing for learners to find where they're supposed to go. Um, and it's very easy. Everyone can edit the whole thing. So it's going to be very easy for people to start messing up someone else's work. Um, so I probably would not use FigJam in this way with learners unless I had a really advanced um, class that had the digital literacy skills and they were able to manage um, all the zooming out and zooming in to find what you need. Um, so I kind of explained this to use with multiple learners or groups. I had to select all the frames and group them together into a section. Um, and then just remember that anyone you give the link to this fig jam is going to be edit able to edit anywhere on the fig jam. Yeah, so Pete has some comments about what um, fig jam might be good for. I think it is really good for graphic design. I think that's really what it was made for. Um, it has all of these uh, shapes you can use um, and they're kind of, so of course it defaults like the text is unreadable. You have to zoom in um, to even see what you're typing. Um, and even now I can't see it. I'm gonna change the text to um, huge. And even now it's still like really hard to see, um, but you can make a lot of different shapes. You can change the color. You can use these connecting lines. So it's really, um, I think it's made for people who like want to make flowcharts and um, graphic organizers and things that are more complex. Maybe you're that kind of person you want to design absolutely beautiful graphic organizers for your students to use. Um, but I think as a learner, I would find this really frustrating. So I did not really have learners interact on it. I kind of just used it um, as a presentation tool. So I would take screenshots of whatever um, text or worksheet we were doing and copy and paste them in here. And then you have a text um, file. Again, it defaults to really, really small. So you have to zoom in or adjust the font size so people can read what you're writing. That was kind of cumbersome. I didn't really like that as much as Jamboard, um, but it's possible. I did use it um, successfully in my classes. There's just a learning curve. Um, you can also make tables. So kind of like in that Google Doc and it's, um, but again, it, it's kind of a learning curve to, to, fig to get really comfortable with making tables and making them look the way you want to. And of course, you know, learners are gonna have to know how to zoom in so they can see what they're working on. Um, this is not really essential, but it's kind of fun. You have all these stamps. So if people wanna put their ideas on sticky notes, you can just stamp to give a thumbs up. You can also switch it to what they call emote. Um, so this is an emoji. So if I have my sad face, I can kind of click here. So if a bunch of people are collaborating <laughs> on the same time, you can have those little fun emojis. Um, maybe not, not essential, but maybe fun if you have learners who have the digital skills for that. Um, Nick, yeah, I think um, this could be potentially a really nice tool for you as the presenter. Um, and yeah, to make your presentations maybe a little more um, interactive for your volunteers. All right. So that is that is just really quickly a little intra introduction to Fig Jam. Um, Susie has a question. Could they label maps? Certainly. Yeah, you could put a screenshot of whatever you want. Um, and then learners could use the text box tool or there is a sticky note tool as well. Um, but again, you just wanna be mindful of zooming in and getting everything the correct size. Um, so you can actually read what people are writing. Lorna asks, can you freeze the backgrounds? Um, do you mean like, can you, like in Jamboard where we would make an image, the background, so it wouldn't move around? 
I think that's what you mean. Um, yeah, I don't know that there's a way to do that um, on this platform. I think once you give someone edit access, they're just going to be able to move everything around. Kaya asks um, about the Zoom whiteboard with the new features. Um, unfortunately, I always taught in Google Meet which um, until recently did not have any annotation um, abilities. So um, I can't really speak to that, but I would say if you're already using Zoom and you're comfortable and satisfied with the whiteboard, it's meeting your instructional purposes. Um, I don't think there's really any reason to go throw this new tool <laughs> in there unless you unless you just want to. Other questions about Fig Jam before I move on. There was a question about, is this one file in Fig Jam? Yes, yes. So that's the thing. Um, each, each jam is just this infinite canvas. So all of this stuff, this is one file. If I give you the link to it, um, I copy the link. And it's this is linked on the Padlet that you'll get later, but um, everyone should be able to go here and view it. I have it set to um, view only. Um, but yeah, so everyone should be able to go in and see. And yeah, so you can kind of see if people are logged in with a Google account or something, you can see who is where, which is kind of nice. Um, another thing, this doesn't have a laser pointer like Jamboard. But the, it does, if I kind of move my cursor around in the same area, eventually I get this waving hand. So I could kind of use that to draw my students' attention to where I wanted them to be looking. Um, but not as good as the laser pointer, I feel. Can I ask a quick question? Yeah. Yeah, so when I asked, like, is this one file, do, can you go to a dashboard and have different infinite like tabletops in the way that we're looking now? Or do I, you just, when you get an account, you just get one infinite board? Oh, no. Um, so great question. If um, this is kind of what my like home looks like. So I have, I have my summer Institute stuff in this um, folder. Um, but I can also um, go to all my, they call them projects. I find this terminology really confusing, but a project is basically a folder. Um, so I can create um, a new folder quite easily and create new files within that folder. Yeah. Lorna says, I think you can set a bookmark and copy the URL for a certain location in Big Jam. Yes, I think that is possible. I think you can. Um, I think if you have things grouped into sections, you can get a URL um, that will take them directly to that section. There is also a way to like... Um, I think the term is spotlight. It could be, they might use a different term, but I think you, there's a way to spotlight yourself when you're presenting. So if you had your learners logged into Fig Jam and they were um, on, on, this, on, on their own devices, then you can spotlight yourself so that wherever you move, their screen is automatically going to move there too. Yeah, Chris, so we'll talk about that professional, um, yes, because that's actually, it's, if you have the premium, you can, um, it's free for education. So we'll talk about that. Thank you. All right. So um, I'm going to move on and show you my third um, featured tool is Flippity. Okay. Um, so Flippity uh, is just a URL that you give to learners. Um, and then you can have this little pop-up with directions. And then you have all these little boxes of text. Um, so I was using, you know, phrases from the song, but you could um, do, you know, single words, you could do whole sentences, you could do paragraphs, uh, you could do single letters, whatever you want. 
Um, to scaffold this a little bit more, since um, you know there aren't multiple pages or frames, everything is all right there. I have used color coding. So I would just tell my learners, you know, this is number one, all everything red goes in that column. This is going to be the first um, sentence in column two, uh, column three, and column four is green. Um, and so that can help them a little bit. The thing, another thing to know about Flippity is that um, it's endlessly reusable, which is a good thing. If I refresh my page, everything is all mixed up again. They get the instructions again. They can try again as many times as they want. Um, but the downside to that, of course, is that you can't save your work. So sometimes when I use this in my online class, students really wanted feedback immediately. Um, so I would tell them, we'll take a screenshot or take a photo and send that to me in WhatsApp, and then I could check their work. But really, that's the only way, if you're not physically in the same room, that's the only way you're going to be able to see what students are doing. Um, and the only way to save their work is by having a photo of it. I'm going to model for you how to create this. I don't think it's... Um, so, Lorna, that's another issue, too. I I did have learners who were constantly saying, this is too small. I can't see it. Can you make it bigger? And I, I never really figured out a good way to do that, because if I zoom in, so I'm just using my keyboard. Um, right now, it's OK. Um, but I had some issues when I was trying to share it in Google Meet. Maybe this is a Zoom versus Google Meet problem um where they would only see some of it um like it didn't like some of the the pieces would no longer appear if i zoomed in to make it larger so this is nice that it's actually working in zoom i wish i had i wish i could teach in zoom <laughs> um but yeah i think um normally it was really it was really hard to adjust the text size So I'll show you, this is on the Padlet. Um, this is a really free site um, and you can use this quick and easy version without having to make a Google spreadsheet. Um, but I think if you make it this way, you won't be able to edit it. Um, the only way to make changes after you've created it would be to um, create it again from scratch with your changes. OK, so I would not recommend that. I would recommend option two um, using a Google spreadsheet. Um, Liddy asks, how does this work on a phone? Um, I actually really liked it for phones. Um, I was worried about the text size. That's the main concern. Is it going to be big enough that you can actually read it? Um, but for most of my learners, they loved it. It worked really well. Um, you know, I would just send the the link in the Google Meet chat or send it in WhatsApp and they could open it and just immediately start moving things around and doing the activity. Um, no app to download. So it was really nice for my learners on phones. Yeah. All right. So to make your own using a spreadsheet, you're going to click this link, make a copy of the template. It's a forced copy link. So you'll make a copy. Um, and then notice that it has several tabs, okay? So this first tab where you land is your, um, where you're gonna enter all your text. So um, I'll just do Elizabeth, Caitlin, Robert, um, Copley, and I'm gonna do a uh, first name and middle name for my column headers. OK, um, and then to make the color, they give you um, several colors here. So I usually just copy and paste. Um, you have to think across in rows. So sometimes I would get a little confused if I wanted to have like the beginning of a sentence, the end of a sentence. Um, you can't do it across. Right? You have to have everything vertically, all your sentence parts in the one column and then your colors in the other column. 
Um, so I'll make all my names purple and then I'll make my headers um, orange. Okay, um, and then important to delete these color names that you don't need. Otherwise, you'll just get a little random rectangle with no text that's red, orange, yellow, whatever. Um, so when you have all your things um, that you want on this tab, go to the next tab with backgrounds. I was often doing sorting activities where I wanted columns. And so they have these preset um, columns, rows, grids. They have a Venn diagram, which is nice. Um, so you can choose from all their backgrounds. They have a world map. Um, so those of you who are interested in doing a map, maybe that would be nice. Um, so I would just move them down and whichever one you put in that row two, the first row is what you will get. Um, this is just going to be two columns. So I'm just going to copy and paste it in that first row. Um, then you go to your options tab. I always wanted the display to be random. That was kind of the point as students are going to move things around. Um, but you can set it so they're in the order if you want, want it that way. Um, and then you can change the font if you want to. It's not really necessary. Um, this fourth tab is where the magic really happens. So you go to this fourth tab and just follow the directions. So you have to um, publish to the web under your file menu. Um, share and publish to web. Okay. Then I click publish. It asked me, are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. Okay. Um, and then you get this link. You need to copy this link, okay? Um, and then just like it says, paste it right here into that green cell. And then this link in row five, that's the one you're going to give to students. So I've copied that. And here's my activity, okay? So I would tell my students, okay, you're gonna sort first name, middle name, okay? My name is Elizabeth Caitlin. My partner's name is Robert Copley. There you go. Um, there are, I feel like this, um, this instructions page is pretty good. I would definitely recommend reading it carefully. Um, and then there's um, FAQs about changing the font, changing the background, and some other things. All right. Um, how are we? How are we doing? Um, Kaya, no, if you edit, if you create it in the spreadsheet, um, I go back to my manipulatives tab in the spreadsheet. Um, I can edit this. Um, I just need to then wait. Okay. It will update eventually, but sometimes it takes like five or 10 minutes. Um, so yeah, that's a really good question. It'll be the same link. Um, you just have to wait a few minutes. All right. Um, I hate rushing. You know what? We'll, we'll, I'll show you the sandbox, um, quickly and then we'll take our break. Um, and then, uh, we can go over a few more things with those tools. So Padlet, I did not choose to feature in this presentation because it's really, really limited if you only have the free version. Um, you're limited to only three files. So the equivalent of three Jamboards, which for me, when I was teaching two different classes, I would use like seven or eight Jamboards in one day. Um, so only having three was really not helpful for my context. Um, but maybe maybe that would be okay with you. It is possible to um, download or export your content. Um, you can get a PDF or a spreadsheet. Um, but of course, visually, it's going to look very different. But you could, in theory, do that and that you, you would have a copy of that resource you created and then you could delete it and create 
a new file within your three file limit. Um, I'm showing you this because Sandbox is a pretty new um, feature. Like I think as of August, this month is the first month that it's been publicly available. Um, and I like it because to me, this is the one that feels really the most similar to Jamboard. Um, you can see you've got your, they call them cards, but you've got your different frames or slides here on the side. And then the tools on the other side are very similar to Jamboard. And I've got my laser pointer. Um, so that's nice. For this activity, um, this worked pretty well when I, you can import Jamboards also into, um, yeah, thank you, Kristen. Yeah, so technically you can create unlimited sandboxes until October 1st, the same time when Jamboard expires, um, but then you're going to have to pay if you want to keep them all. Yeah. Um, so this worked pretty well. Um, it was interesting in my original um Jamboard, I had made this text here, now go to frame two, and the circle um, in the background. Um, and so they don't move. It's just like I, you know, I set the background in Jamboard. Um, but the text on the sticky note became super tiny. And the, um, I can't figure out how to adjust it. I don't, I don't know that it's possible to adjust the text size on a sticky note in sandbox. So that might be a problem um, for your learners, depending on their device. Um, when I duplicated that frame, it was interesting. Um, the circle and the background text were not copied over. So only the things that were movable on the original Jamboard were copied. Um, yeah, Kimberly and Lorna, I see your um, comments about Google Meet. Yeah, it's nice. Google Meet now has a laser pointer, um, but it's, you know, you have to be pretty proficient in like knowing, understanding which tab you're in and um, what you're presenting. So I think having the laser pointer built into Jamboard was was really nice. But yes, there is now a laser pointer that you can use in Google Meet. Um, all right. So I just wanted to show you um, in Padlet, you have different um, visitor permissions. So you have reader, um, you also have writer, which um, readers like view only, writer is kind of in between editor and reader. So if I give this to students and they have writer access, then they can type, they can draw, highlight, and add new images and attachments all without signing in, but they can't move or edit anything that the teacher already put on there. So for the sequencing activity, that's pretty useless, right? They, they are not able to move this the way I am because I'm the owner of the file. Um, but... For a different instructional purpose, like if you have a worksheet on here that you don't want people to move around and mess with, um, that's really nice. I can just copy and paste my image. I don't have to mess with, um, you know, saving it as an image and uploading it to be the background and changing the background. I can just copy and paste and I'm done and my learners um, won't be able to move it around. Um, so that could potentially be um, positive for you. All right, I see we are right at 2.15. Um, so we will go ahead and take our break now. I can stay here and answer a few more questions in the chat, but let's go ahead and um, take our break. So welcome back from break, everyone. Um, before I give you your workshop time, I'm going to quickly go through a few more things that I might have forgotten to mention about these three um, Google Apps, FigJam, and Flippity. Um, and also, if we got any new people joining us, maybe you were in a different session for the first half, this will give you a little bit of an idea of what we're doing. Um, so some things to keep in mind with Google Apps. 
they're you know they're not the fanciest um they're not the most beautiful but honestly i think if you are already using google classroom um i don't think there's anything wrong with just keeping things simple for yourself and just using docs slides and sheets since they're already built right in um and they work with google classroom seamlessly um Another thing, you may know this already, but it is pretty easy to convert a PDF um, worksheet or whatever um, materials you have that are in PDF form. Um, you can make them into digital worksheets in Google Slides. And there's a tutorial video um, on the resource padlet that shows you how to do that. And then, of course, Google Apps are great. Um, it's a great way to teach uh, digital literacy skills to your learners. Um, lots of transferable skills for careers and for their education. We know so many colleges and workplaces use Google Apps anyway. Um, and there are actually North Star standards for um, Google Docs, Drive, um, Slides, and Sheets, OK? They're a little bit hard to find. I, I recommend that you go to the North Star website and download a PDF of the most recent standards. Um, uh, quite a lot of content has been added in the past few years. So go get yourself a new copy. Um, it's easy to find the docs. Um, they're listed under the Microsoft modules in those essential software skills. The um, the drive slides and sheets are a little bit harder to find. Uh, you have to go to those additional Google topics. There aren't um, a lot of North Star resources um, for those topics yet, but, oh, Katrina is saying she has lessons for Google Drive. Um, excellent. I would love to see that. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I've also found, too, that I was able to adapt um, some of the, the North Star curriculum that was already available for Microsoft Excel and Microsoft PowerPoint. A lot of that you can adapt um, for Google Slides and Google Sheets. All right, moving right along, Fig Jam. We saw this. Um, it really seems like something that was made for graphic design. Not really um, a lot of thought was given to users um, with low digital literacy skills. So um, maybe not the best platform um, for having your learners interact with each other unless they have... Um, very high skills and they all have um, devices that are gonna enable them to do all that zooming in and zooming out and adjusting everything that you would have to do. Um, just viewing a canvas worked pretty well on my phone. Um, it was actually kind of nice. Um, it's very intuitive, like you can zoom out and zoom in um, just by that same um, pinch and pull motion that you use on any touch screen. Um, that was very intuitive. Um, so I think it could be a good way to share materials with your learners. Um, just maybe not the best thing to have them um, edit or contribute to. Um, I think they'll need a it, they'll need a computer or a device that has a really large touch screen. So to get all the free stuff in um, Fig Jam, you have to, they call it verify your education status. It's just a quick form to fill out with your email and where you teach and so forth. And then both times I did it, um, I was like, I got a message almost immediately. You've been verified. You have an education account. But... Um, there might be a few additional steps um, to uh, like upgrade your account to actually have access to all those features. Um, I'm not going to go into it now, but there's a link um, in the Padlet that I will share that takes you through. It's got a tutorial with screenshots um, how to do that. For Flippity, obviously you as the teacher need to get pretty comfortable with Google Sheets in order to um, use that and save your activities. 
I highly recommend um, developing a naming convention for your all your spreadsheets, right? Because they're all going to just end up in your Google Drive. You want to name them and organize them somehow to make it easy for future you to find um, and reuse what you've created. Um, we mentioned about the backgrounds. There are all those ones I showed you that are pre-made. And you can um, make your own custom backgrounds. You can upload a different image of your choice. Um, take a look at that FAQ page. Also, to get that pop-up, that was kind of a new thing. Um, I had not seen that before until I was preparing for this presentation. Um, that's also pretty easy. It's explained in the FAQs, but you use the square brackets around any of your text um, in one of those cells where you're entering your other text that you want learners to move around and the square brackets make it that pop-up window that they see first when they click on the link. All right. So now it's time to actually make some things. I'm going to try to give you a good solid chunk of time in breakouts. And the main objective here is just mess around and see what happens, uh, to paraphrase our gymnastics team. Um, often, like as a teacher, I... I don't want to take time to mess around, right? Class is starting in half an hour. I just need something that works that I can use right now. Um, so this is intended to just give you some time when you don't have the pressure of class starting imminently to play around with stuff and see what happens. You're not going to break anything, okay? Um, try to choose just one tool. I know I showed you a lot of different things, but I think the time will be... Um, most productive for you if you just choose one tool. Um, 25 minutes is a good chunk of time, but it's not a lot of time. Um, you'll go to the resource Padlet. Um, you can explore the resources that I've put there for each um, for each of the tools. Um, you have all my examples, the five ways um, to do that activity. Um, I have some resources for Google Apps, FigJam, Flippity, and some of those other tools that are on the second page of that um, chart. Um, and then after you've explored some of the resources, kind of um, gotten an idea how to get started, start making something. Right, preferably start making something that will be useful to you as soon as you get back to your class. Um, this is your time. Amy, I will share the link to the Padlet in just a moment. Hold on. Um, so this is also your time to collaborate. You're going to go um, into rooms based on the tool that you're choosing. Um, so talk with your colleagues in your group who are also playing around with the same tool. You'll be able to share your screens. Um, so if you want to show something to other people in your group, you can do that. Um, and help each other. It's completely fine if you haven't figured it all out yet. Things are not working. Share your screen. Work through it together. And then please share um, what you found. Share links to... Um, things you make. And I think maybe what is most valuable is share what did not work. Okay. Tell us um, what, what we should avoid if we're using these tools. That's really helpful. Okay. So just to be clear, there are two Padlets. Okay. There is this resource Padlet that I will give you the link to in a moment. Okay. And then towards the end of our breakout time, I would like you to go to this other Padlet that's the blue one, okay? This is where you're sharing. So on the red Padlet, you just have view access. You're not going to be able to add anything on the red Padlet. You want to go to the blue Padlet, the sharing one. That's where everyone has writer permission. And you can um, add your ideas. 
I'm trying to be mindful of the organization to make this a helpful resource. So try to use the plus sign um, in the correct column where you want to post. And that way your comment will or your um, link will end up in the right place. If you put it in the wrong place, it's not really a big deal. We can change it later. Um, but just be aware of that's how you get things in the right uh, column. So we can pause the recording here. So welcome back, everyone. Um, I see a few people are still trying to uh, post on the sharing Padlet. Um, I really appreciate that. I'll put it in the um, chat one more time, the, the direct link to that blue Padlet um, that I'm showing. Um, someone um, said it was not really loading for them. So I think if you're writing, you can continue to write, um, but it'll probably be, since we only have three minutes left, let's just, um, we can turn on our microphones and talk if you'd like to. Um, I'm just curious, which tool did you choose to try? Um, which instructional purposes could this serve in your context? So I teach online only, and I'm really looking for ways to make it more interactive and um, to incorporate more writing for the students. Um, so I, I guess Flippity, I did do Flippity because I've never used that before. Um, that's not necessarily them practicing writing, but at least it's, you know, more um, interactive. <laughs> but yeah. Um, yeah, the only thing, so I just realized at the end, I asked someone in my breakout room, when I send the students a link, they each get their own. Is that right? They, that's what I was told. And then, um, but how do I see their work? Like I probably wouldn't see their work. That's when no. you're saying you have to take a picture. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. That's the only issue. Cause I work with like low um, digital literacy students. So mm -hmm. they, that's just another thing for them to have to figure out. I know. I, I never required it. I just said, if you want me to see what you're doing, you can send me a photo, but Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, yeah. And I used it a lot um, just kind of as a warm up to writing. Like um, if I was wanted them to use sentence starters, I would have the first part of the sentence and the ending part of the sentence and they had to match what went together. Um, Stephanie Summers does a lot of activities. Um, she did them in Jamboard where she would have learners arrange sentences to make a paragraph that made sense. Um, so you could do things like that to support the writing. Mm, okay. Good. Thank you. Yeah. Anyone else? Hi. Uh, so I tried Flippity. Uh -huh. And uh, the first thing I did was just a simple alphabet sorting. And uh, I think that I think I'm, I'm really enthusiastic about that. That would be like an in-person class from using a smart board. Yeah. And having students sort like capital letters from lowercase or moving around letters to spell their name. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I tried to do a digital literacy thing with vocabulary terms and picture images. And that when I had more trouble uh, getting getting it together. So I think maybe one of the other resources might be better. Mm -hmm. uh, Flippity seems to need images that are that are open sourced or hosted somewhere. And it had some. It had a lot of difficulty uh, pulling those images. Yeah, I have not um, tried anything with images myself other than a custom background. So that's that's an area for more explore exploration for sure. Um, and I'm sorry, we are at time. So um, we don't, <laughs> we're not gonna be able to discuss anything more. Um, but I will keep that sharing Padlet open so you can continue to add questions, comments, hot tips, um, whatever you want. Um, everything is on that resource Padlet. And please just remember um, for anything uh, technology or distance learning related, you have a help desk. Um, I or somebody else on the distance learning team will try to get back to you as soon as we can. So thank you so much for attending today. I hope you have a great, um, I guess this is the last session, isn't it? So <laughs> great day and great um, school year.